Hello. When I'm messing around with electronics-y kind of things, I quite often find myself wanting to power a circuit with uh, either 12 volts or 5 volts is usually the most common. Uh, in fact, the most common case is when I'm working with something like this. This is a Flip32 flight controller. And I often want to power this with a 5 volt supply on here because when you power it with USB, you don't actually get 5 volt power on the rails here. So that's... Um, a bit of a nuisance um, and when I'm testing things out even at the bench I want to have 5 volts on there sometimes um, and especially when I'm outside I also need some other way to power it as well and what I've done in the past is quite often I will make up a a little um, voltage step down thing like this this is just a well this is actually 5 volts yeah um, and then I will be able to use that when I'm outside so I can test things like um, the GPS which needs uh, if you're using a GPS here you'll need to have a proper supply of 5 volts on there anyway because that won't run from the GPS at least with this one I'm not sure if the NASA 32 will give you 5 volts on here from your USB or not uh, another way you can do it uh, if you have a USB of some sort around is you can use um, FTDI adapter like this and you can get either 5 volts or actually this one lets you switch to 3.3 volts on there as well and that's convenient enough, I suppose, if you're if you have a USB around. Another way you can do it is if you have a spare ESC for your motors, which has a beck inside it. Um, those are quite handy too. It's basically just a ready-made version of this. So these these two you could use a, um, a battery for, and this one, of course, you need a USB. Um, but these. Um, methods all <laughs> have a little bit of a nuisance factor and um, in the case of this you need to have a battery and this other one you need to have a battery as well this one you need a USB and in this one in particular when you plug this in if you're doing Arduino stuff this will show up as another USB port on your Arduino ID which is a bit of a nuisance because I always seem to forget which is which when I'm working with them uh, so after a while I got a bit sick of that and I bought this little thing here on Banggood because it was so cheap and I've seen people using variable bench power supplies on YouTube and I thought that looked pretty neat so I'd try a cheap ass version of what they were using and it kind of worked alright although it didn't actually go up to 12 volts like it says and the power output is weak as shit I mean look <laughs> 2 watts are you kidding me um, apart from that it was okay but then I moved countries and I wasn't able to use uh, the 110 volt power input to it where I'm living now anyway so I just left it behind when I shifted um, and then I came across um, a much better way to do this which is still cheap ass and that is to use a an old ATX power supply for a computer um, and that actually has 3.3, 5 and 12 volts and it all ready to go in a nice little box that you can use on your bench um, and get lots and lots of power from at least up to almost 20 amps at 12 volts from this one I think um, but they do go up to this is a 250 watt one but you can get them up to 800 watts or even more I think uh, if you want to get an expensive one but you don't you want to get a cheap one right at least I did uh, so I managed to get this on an online auction for ten dollars and I'll put a link in the description to a video which is going to be much much better than the one you're watching right now and he goes over all of the details of the wiring that you're going to find in here there's a lot of wires but it turns out that most of them are kind of the same actually let's have a look at the photos while I blabber on about this uh, this is what I started with of course and the guy in the video in the link in the description he started with a slightly different one uh, I wanted to get one that had a larger fan on top the 12 centimeter fan because they're they're really nice and quiet um, probably doesn't matter too much but I thought I'd get a quiet one if I could uh, that turned out to be a little bit of a problem as we'll see and the one I got had a switch on the back already so that was quite nice uh, the guy in the video that I followed on from he had to make a switch for his unit um, but like I say all of the wires are pretty much the same in fact you can see that they're all actually going to the same spots like these three four orange wires are actually going exactly the same place and most of the other ones are all just sort of joined on to each other as well and if you're lucky like I was they're all very nicely labeled so you can see exactly what's what even all these other 
control wires um, and it's it, it really is very simple a um, couple of things I had to get that I didn't already have were these banana plug connectors and this uh, large wattage resistor uh, so the fan on the top as you can see is taking up the entire top part of the case and that prevents me from putting my connectors into here like I wanted to and on the inside you can see so this is where I wanted to drill my connect holes to put my connectors into but this is where the fan is but fortunately I found that you can just stick the fan on top it doesn't really matter it works perfectly well on top uh, so that's the holes drilled that's the connections from the top uh, the back where the switch and the LEDs are I didn't use any hot glue I just drilled a five millimeter hole for these these are five millimeter LEDs and just poked them in and they they're very hard to move so I just left them like that uh, the dummy load resistor I followed his suggestion and did this with a couple of sheets of um, PCB material just stuck together with double-sided tape and placed inside the back of the case there in front of where the uh, air exits so hopefully I don't think this gets really hot anyway but um, even if it does it should, shouldn't be a problem and that's what everything look like before I close the lid up uh, you can see that there's some spare wires here quite a lot actually so if you wanted to you could put a lot more than just the four connections I've put on here um, but yeah that's the uh, that's the photo so as you can see it's um, it's off at the moment but if I just switch the main switch on at the back we can see that the uh, uh, what is the word? Standby. The standby LED comes on and then when we switch it on we get the green LED on there as well and the fan turns and everything's happy. Um, so let's have a look at the voltages to see whether they're actually correct or not. So the voltages are not exactly precise on that one. 3.2 three <laughs> uh, this is five that's nice and then we should have 12 12.2 and 12.2 and zero hopefully yep wow this multi-mood is not very good but anyway you can see yeah works okay no problems so there you go that's that's all I really wanted to say about this I almost didn't make a video on this because it's so it's so basic and the other guy's video is so much better than mine but it amazed me that I've been doing this sort of electronics -y stuff for quite a while and this never occurred to me so I thought I'd just mention it to uh, my my viewers just in case there's any dummies out there like me who would like to have something like this and just didn't think of it um, and I'll put a second link in the description actually to a another video where there's a guy who made a variable supply uh, a variable voltage um, version of something like this not not quite the same it's using a little bit more expensive parts um, but if you want a variable supply that's a pretty good way to do it and I might try that myself in future as well because when I looked at prices for variable supplies they were um, fairly expensive so that's what's one reason I ended up doing this instead of buying it myself anyway thanks for watching